Live from London, this is BBC News. An emergency meeting of the UN Security Council hears the situation in Gaza is becoming increasingly desperate. An abducted Israeli soldier has been reunited with her family in the first known rescue of a hostage. King Charles and Queen Camilla are starting their four-day state visit in Kenya, where he will acknowledge painful aspects of its colonial past. And the cast of Friends pay tribute to Matthew Perry, saying they're utterly devastated by his death. Hello and a very warm welcome to the programme. I'm Sally Bundock. The head of the United Nations Children Agency, UNICEF, has said that more than 420 children are being killed or injured in Gaza every day as Israel continues its bombardment of the territory. Speaking at the UN Security Council, Catherine Russell said the numbers sourced from Gaza's Hamas-controlled health ministry should shake council members to the core. Israel says it's targeting Hamas, which is designated as a terrorist organization by the UK and other governments, following the attacks of October the 7th that killed 1,400 people and saw more than 200 taken hostage. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has rejected calls for a ceasefire in Gaza, but Mrs Russell urged the Security Council to press for one. And these pictures are from southern Israel looking uh, towards Gaza, where, of course, you can see this morning uh, plumes of smoke uh, above uh, Gaza to see, uh, of course, what's been going on overnight. The death toll in Gaza has surpassed 8,300, according to the Hamas-run health ministry, including 3,457 minors. That's the latest statistics on the BBC Live page, which is updating all the time. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. Now, let's look at some other stories making the headlines today. Two of Boris Johnson's closest aides during the first months of the pandemic, Dominic Cummings and Lee Kane, are to give evidence to the COVID inquiry today. It's after the inquiry heard on Monday, the UK's top civil servant had told colleagues at the time that the former prime minister could not lead at the height of the pandemic. Two former RAF bases in Essex and Lincolnshire are at the centre of a judicial review in the High Court today after the government's plan to house asylum seekers in disused military sites while their claims are being processed. Local councils have brought forward legal challenges after a proposal to house 2,000 men at the former RAF Scampton. Assisted dying on the Isle of Man could move a step closer as draft legislation is debated in Parliament. The plans would see residents with a terminal illness and no more than six months to live given the right to end their lives with help. More details on that story on our website. You're live with BBC News. Here in the UK, families who lost their babies due to avoidable NHS errors are calling for the Health Secretary, Steve Barclay, to set up a national inquiry into maternity services in England. The parents say that despite a raft of reports and reviews into various NHS trusts, systematic issues continue to adversely impact on the care of women and babies. Here's our social affairs correspondent, Michael Buchanan. I'll be back shortly with the top business stories. It's a really busy agenda for business. We're going to get earnings from BP today. The oil giant, of course, Bernard Looney, its chief executive, surprisingly uh, resigned only a few months ago. So all that to discuss and more. I will be back in just a moment. On BBC News, the latest business news from across the globe. World Business Report. Hello, you're live with BBC News. Packing up for the last time, warnings of a sharp rise in the number of UK businesses at risk of going bust. 
gold rush. Prices rise by around 8% since the start of the Israel-Gaza war as investors seek a safe haven. And the growing Halloween economy, the dressing up business helping to drive record spending on this haunted holiday. Hello, I'm Sally Bundock. Let's focus now on the top business stories, starting in the UK, where there has been a sharp rise in the number of companies at risk of going bust, according to figures seen by the BBC. The insolvency expert Begbie's trainer say the number of firms in what's called critical financial distress, so that means they're facing court orders for unpaid debts. This has jumped by 25 percent in the last three months. The company says higher prices, increased borrowing costs and lower consumer confidence are some of the issues to blame. Here's our business editor, Simon Jack, who's been to Cardiff to talk to small businesses there about the financial pressures they're facing. Michelle Fleury there. Let's bring you some other business stories. The Bank of Japan's announced further adjustments to its yield curve control policy, allowing 10-year government bond yields to increase above 1%. This follows the falling value of the yen and is significant as the central bank is seemingly taking steps towards ending its massive stimulus program. At the end of its two-day meeting, the Bank of Japan kept its negative short-term interest rates at minus 0.1%. U.S. President Biden has signed a far-reaching executive order on artificial intelligence requiring companies to report to the federal government about any risks their technology can pose. It also seeks to clamp down on deep fakes and the use of AI-generated audio and videos. The move comes as Washington tries to lead the world in AI regulation, even as the U.K. is about to host its own AI regulation summit. And Elon Musk is expected to attend that global summit on artificial intelligence in the UK this week. UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak says he would do a live interview with the tech billionaire after Thursday's event. The summit hopes to bring together AI experts and global leaders to talk about the risks of artificial intelligence. The pace of price rises in shops in the UK has eased to its slowest rate in more than a year, according to data from the British Retail Consortium. Annual shop price inflation dropped to 5.2% in October, down a percent from the month before. The trade body said a fall in the price of homegrown food was behind the numbers. Coming up, the pumpkins which saved a bakery business but also nearly squashed its owner. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. BBC News, bringing you different stories from across the UK. It is this to the net. Hello again, you're with BBC News. Let's carry on with the business coverage and more now on those warnings from the World Bank, but this time about the price of gold. Long seen as a safe haven investment in times of upheaval, the price of the precious metal has gone up by some 8% since the start of the Israel-Gaza war. And according to a new report out from the World Gold Council, it's also being bought up by central banks like never before, with purchases so far this year the highest on record for a nine month period. Well, I'm joined by John Reed, market strategist at the World Gold Council. Good morning to you. So this report is just come out. Uh, just talk us through what's happening at the moment. All right, well, enjoy. I hope the weather is on your side. Gregor Lawson, thank you for being on the programme. Appreciate it. Well, let's have a look at financial markets. Are they scary? Is it a trick or is it a treat today? Well, for Japan, up by almost a quarter of a percent, as you can see. You can also see the value of the yen following the decisions from the Bank of Japan, which we've mentioned earlier. Price of oil, just over 80, well, almost $87 a barrel, nowhere near 150, which is what the World Bank is, is warning about. It's hard to get your head around that in terms of the impact. Let's look at the next board. For the S&P 500, it was one of the best days they've had in quite a long time. Look at the close across Wall Street, a strong gains at the start of a new trading week. You're up to date on the latest business news. I'll see you soon.
Live from London, this is BBC News. An emergency meeting of the UN Security Council hears the situation in Gaza is becoming increasingly desperate. An abducted Israeli soldier has been reunited with her family in the first known rescue of a hostage. King Charles and Queen Camilla are starting their four-day state visit in Kenya, where he will acknowledge painful aspects of its colonial past. And the cast of Friends pay tribute to Matthew Perry, saying they're utterly devastated by his death. Hello and a very warm welcome. I'm Sally Bundog. The head of the United Nations Children's Agency, UNICEF, has said that more than 420 children are being killed or injured in Gaza every day as Israel continues its bombardment of the territory. Speaking at the UN Security Council, Catherine Russell said the numbers sourced from Gaza's Hamas-controlled health ministry should shake council members to the core. Israel says it is targeting Hamas, which is designated as a terrorist organization by the UK and other governments, following the attacks of October the 7th that killed 1,400 people and saw more than 200 taken hostage. Our Middle East correspondent Yolan Nell reports. Anna, thank you so much for now. Anna Foster in southern Israel uh, for us. And these are the pictures we're seeing from southern Israel looking uh, towards Gaza. And as we've mentioned, it has been another night of intense uh, fighting with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu ruling out calls for an immediate ceasefire. This is Gaza City uh, this morning. Uh, Netanyahu saying Israel will press ahead with plans to wipe out uh, Hamas. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. You're live with BBC News. Now to our main story on the Israel-Gaza war. I spoke to Soraya Ali, who is the global media manager for the Middle East and North Africa at Save the Children. She told me what she has been seeing and hearing in Gaza. And still to come here on the BBC, all the top business stories. It's a really busy agenda at the moment. We've had rates decisions in Japan and earnings stories to discuss. I'll see you in just a moment. On BBC News, the latest business news from across the globe. World Business Report. Hello again, you're live with BBC News. Packing up for the last time, warnings of a sharp rise in the number of UK businesses at risk of going bust. Gold rush prices rise by around 8% since the start of the Israel-Gaza war as investors seek a safe haven. And the growing Halloween economy, the dressing up business helping to drive record spending on this haunted holiday. Hello, I'm Sally Bundock. It's time for the top business stories. And we start in the UK where there's been a sharp rise in the number of companies at risk of going bust, according to figures seen by the BBC. The insolvency experts Begbie Trainer say the number of firms in what's called critical financial distress, that means they face court orders for unpaid debts. This has jumped by 25% in the last three months. The company says higher prices, increased borrowing costs and lower consumers' confidence are to blame. Our business editor Simon Jack has been in Cardiff to talk to small businesses there about the financial pressures they're facing. Michelle Fleury there, around the world and across the UK. This is BBC News.
You're live with BBC News. Let's carry on with the business coverage. Looking at the United States, it started to bulk buy Japan's seafood in response to a Chinese import ban that followed the release of treated water from the Fukushima nuclear plant. It comes after G7 trade ministers requested the immediate repeal of bans on Japanese food. Here's our Asia business reporter, Jared De Silva. So if you spot him in the streets of Edinburgh, I want to know what is he wearing? Thank you so much for your company uh, today. I'll be back a little later. We've got BP's latest results coming out in 10 minutes. I'll update you in 40. See you then. <laughs>